My name is Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we're the Yahoo the Troy YouTube channel, and this is the Ecclesia. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys very, very much for joining us. And it is just started raining today. So hopefully the rain isn't going to nail this and uh, make this a distraction. So we'll wait for see if we can get a couple more people in the live stream here. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. How are, uh, how's your week so far? Good. Good. It's just been normal work around the farm. Um, that was Leo. He says hi. Yep. It's, yeah, I'm yep, sorry. So for anyone who has never heard one of these, we have 10 pit bulls, and sometimes they get a little bit rowdy. Sometimes they get a little bit um, crazy. They're not on leashes or in kennels or anything of the sort, and the rain actually just started lessening up. So hopefully it will disappear. All right. Well, gentlemen, how are, uh, what else is going on? Anything? Uh, it's the middle of the week. We are cruising on to an end of the week. Yep. And so one thing that we did not do last week that I thought we should probably do, and um, for those who are, um, who've never joined us before, and those who, um, I guess let's start with a quick prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this night. We thank you for this people that you have brought before us. And Father, we thank you for working with us. We thank you for your Torah. We thank you for your son. We thank you for giving us a path forward and for giving us your Torah, for giving us the precious set of laws, statutes, and commandments that we as a people could take and we can have and that we can build into our lives. Father, you have given us everything. You've given us a, a beautiful creation, a, a wonderful world to live into. And Father, you've given us a path home. Father, I ask that you will bring the Baruch HaKadosh on those who are listening and those who are willing to listen. And Father, open the eyes of those who are willing to see and the ears of those who are willing to hear. We thank you for everything. And again, we thank you for your Torah. We thank you for your son. And we ask that everybody is blessed within this little ecclesia. We thank you for all. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. Okay, so let's take a quick look right here and see what we have. This is something, number one, I wouldn't recommend Wikipedia for pretty much anything in the world. Um, and I doubt they have any of this correct. But we were looking at trying to figure out some of the history of the book of Sirach. <clears throat> and so let's just kind of read what they have here and maybe um, break this down a little bit here. The book of Sirach, also called the Wisdom of Sirach, or simply Sirach, and also known as the book of Ecclesiasticus, or Ben Surah, is a Jewish work originally in Hebrew of ethnical teachings from apparently approximately 200 to 175 BCE, written by the Jewish scribe Ben Surah of Jerusalem, on the inscription of his father, Joshua, son of Sirach, sometimes called Jesus, son of Sirach, or Yeshua ben Eliezer ben Sirach. Okay? In Egypt, it was translated into Greek by the author's unnamed grandson who added a prologue. The prologue is generally considered the earliest witness to a canon of books of the prophets, and thus the date of the text is the subject of intense scrutiny. The book itself is the largest wisdom book from antiquity to have survived. Okay, so a couple things. Um, what do you guys think of that? Uh, maybe, maybe that could be, I don't, I don't know about the whole Jewish thing. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the thing. People do not understand exactly what they're saying when they say Jewish thing. We're not, when you say Jewish, you're only dealing with one tribe out of all of the rest of them. You know, it, people have just somehow fallen on the word Jewish, and that's what they, they put the entire tribes of Israel under. And it, it's not really that. But the, the thing is, it did come out of Hebrew land. It came out of the people um, that were in captivity. And if it was approximately 200 to 175 BCE, then um, we're, we're basically 200 years before our Messiah was ever out there. And so for anybody that wants to follow along in the, um, the same scriptures that we are reading here, you can go to yahuwahandthetorah.net. And we just uploaded our downloads. And if you just click at the top, if downloads isn't at the top, you can just click on the three little lines and then click downloads. And it's right here. And this is the Wisdom of Sirach, Sirach, the Ecclesiasticus. And so that is right there, along with some really cool downloads. And I would, first of all, again, apologize for my dogs if they're going to speak up here. But this right here, if you guys have never seen this, and we're going to be going over this pretty soon, but this Torah Commands book is pretty cool. And it lists all of the commandments of our Creator it out in a various different way. And us here at the Yahoo and the Torah channel, we've been trying to categorize and trying to list and trying to get the exact um, list of, of law statutes and commands dialed in. And so this is another look at that. And so 
that might be something you guys might want to look at. And so if not, let us get into this. Ms. Nicole, anybody in our chat? Looks like we have about nine people in, but we have Judith and the Grand that have said hi to us. Hi, the Grand. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody in the chat. I hope you guys are doing well. And, and also stupid, but I don't hi, know. Hi, Mr. Without stupid. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's in our chat room, so we will say hi to our friend. And, yeah, the Grand, our grandma, we appreciate you hanging out. And to anybody in the future that comes along and listens to this, much love to all of you. Dredge guys. is also here. Oh, Dredge Deplorable. Much love, brother. Okay, so last week, guys, we went over a prologue that was, um, it was a little different, right? Um, what did you, do you guys remember exactly what chapter one was about? It uh, was basically like, it was a lot like Shaloma, except the prologue was like basically giving the story of how this guy was in Egypt, how he was, basically had to translate the word of the Torah to the Egyptians, how to translate these wisdom to them because they didn't understand it. Yeah, and it does sound a lot like um, Solomon, and so... I guess that's a good thing. Um, hopefully this guy doesn't have 700 wives, and hopefully he was a little smarter than our, our buddy Solomon in, in terms of straying away from the Torah in his, his latter years. So let's begin right here. Okay, chapter two. My son, if you come to serve Yahuwah, prepare your being for trial. Prepare your heart and constantly endure, and do not hasten in time of trouble. Okay, R right out of the gate, I, you know, this is something I guess that, we should all be very um, understanding of that when we are in Torah, when we are keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, and, and that comes from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and nowhere else, right? Those are the five books that we take, and those are what we use for our life. When you are in the laws, statutes, and commands, when you go further into the book of Revelation, it talks about the, the future war and how the future war is against those who are Torah keepers. Those who, the Hasatan, he doesn't care about the Catholics or the, or the, the Christians that worship on a, a, the wrong day and eat their pork. They don't care about them because they are not keeping the laws, statutes, and commands. So the war is against those who are in the Torah. And so if you guys are seeking our creator and your heart is set upon the face and the the way of our, our creator. And the only way that you would ever know this is when you guys know what the Torah is. And for those who hear this in the future, and those who have never read the Torah, I would, I would urge you guys to grab a, a copy of, of any scriptures. In fact, you can go to, to Yahoo and the Torah.net and it's, it's on the site and you can download this and, and read the Torah as a love letter from our creator to you guys and understand that you guys are Yisrael. You are Israel. It only takes that you guys follow the laws, statutes, and commands. But when you do this, understand that we are being prepared for trial because Hasatan is going to come and we are will be tested like everybody in scriptures is tested. And so we need to understand that. Thoughts, anyone? Uh, yes, we need to follow the laws and follow the statute. Right? Um, I want to go over my verse one. I, you have Sefer open on yours? I have Sefer open, yeah. So it says, My son, if you come to serve you, who prepare your soul for temptation. So it's a little different than what yours mm. said. Yeah, it does prepare your soul for temptation. And that, that's essentially it because, you know, temptation, when we, when we sin, we're corrupting our soul. And so that is essentially right. You know, these two different translations are, are pretty good. Okay, let's continue on. And we got dogs that are doing some weird things. Okay, and do not hasten in time of trouble. Cling to him and do not depart. All right, so where it says do not hasten, right? Where it's like when you're in your times of trouble, when something bad happens, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a reactionary move. You're going to do something that is not not, right, not in the right mind. You're going to make a mistake, and it could put you in a worse situation. This is where you have to think back, and this is where you have to rely on Yah, and you have to say, okay, Yah, this is in your hands. This is, I'm going to give you my problems, and I'm going to let you deal with it, and then you need to calm down, and then you can deal with your situation. Yeah, and so the end of two on um, the, the Sefer says, set your heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Yeah, absolutely. You're right on this. Okay, and then it says, cling to him and do not depart that you may be increased at your latter end. Whosoever is brought upon you, accept cheerfully and be patient when you are brought low. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So it basically, it says whenever someone comes your way and you have to take care of this person, right? Whenever you have to, whatever it is, 
no matter what the problem is, if you've seen this person a hundred times in one day and you're getting tired, it says you need to endure, you need to you need to deal with this and you need to help this person out. If someone is put upon you, you is giving this for you to take charge of and take care of this person because this could be a person that you need to save. It, it is also, it could be a person that's also a whatsoever. And so it's, it's also an incident or things of this nature. You know, whatsoever is brought upon you as, as well as in different versions. So what, whatever they... Whatever comes upon you, whether it is loss of your job or whether it is, you know, what, whatever it is, understand that our creator knows your pain, understands that he understands completely about your brokenness and he doesn't want you to be broken and he is doing everything that he's possible, um, you know, to keep you, keep you sane and all we have to do is cling to him. Okay, let's continue on on this. Let's, where are we at? Verse five. Verse, verse five. Okay, sorry guys, I have like dogs that are like scratching my legs as we do this, so this is quite the test. Okay, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him and he shall help you. Establish your way and trust in him. So verse five is basically says, we are tried, we see what we really are after we go through adversity. That's what you see what gold is made of. You see how... How gold is, that's how we will be. After our trials and adversities, we will see how who we really follow, who we really serve. Yeah, and you know, it was about a week ago that it was, um, we started last year about this time, we started losing uh, what I think ended up being about 20 cows of ours that died in normal to freaky to weird ways. And um, we lost everything. We And we love our cows dearly. And it was absolutely... And in fact, last year at this time, I went blind. I went completely blind. And we, the cows all start dying as I'm going blind. And we have the 10 pit bulls here. And so um, we were definitely tried. And it's, you know, it's like when Messiah was talking to Kepha, to, to Peter. And he says, hey, you know, Satan wants to sift you like flour. You know, and he's like, uh, you know, those are scary things to hear. And we need to come out of the fire. We need to, to understand that we will be tested. And we must cling to our creator and never, ever take our eyes off him. Okay, anyone else have anything on this? Uh, no, the next part is believe in him and he will help you in verse 6. And uh, that is true. If you believe in Yahuwah, he will help you. He will be there for you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's about faith, right? It's about faith. Somehow we are created. Somehow we are here in this world. Somehow we came to be. And, you know, it doesn't make any other sense other than what we have been told in the story of creation in Genesis, in, in Bereshit. Um, and so we need to um, we need to understand the creator is there and uh, we need to believe in him because nobody else created this. And, um, you know, from, from Deuteronomy 6, we know that Yahuwah is one and that is the one we need to put every bit of our trust into. Okay, establish your way and trust in him. You who revere Yahuwah, wait for his kindness and do not turn aside lest you fall. You who revere Yahuwah, Believe him, and your reward shall not fail. You who revere Yahuwah have expectancy for good. Okay, what does what your guys say for expectancy for joy? Expe everlasting joy. Or for, yeah, so you... For mercy. Uh, yeah, so nine... Says, Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Okay. Um, what is reverence? What is revering Yahuwah? Uh, what, fearing it fearing, is respect obeying. for him, obeying his commands. What, so if we are not obeying his commands, do we not fear our creator or have we been brainwashed? It's, how, how do we? It's a, it's a little of everything, right? I mean, especially if you have heard the word that you need to follow it and you and you still are not willing to accept it. It's a, it's a lack of fear, right? Because he created you, he told you what to do, and he can take your life away in an instant, right? He can take it away, and yet you still don't have enough fear to understand that he can send you to hell for these things, for the sins, right? If you don't have both things, you can be caught on judgment day, and that is, you have to have a fear of Yah that he can judge you. It's kind of like a child when he is told to do something, take out the trash, and if he doesn't take out the trash, he'll be punished. But he doesn't fear the punishment. He doesn't fear what the, his parent will do to him. Yeah, I spent 25, I don't know how many years, probably 25, 30 years in, in a Christian religion. My mother was very hardcore religious and Christian. We we're Baptist, Southern Baptist. And um, we, we thought we were very good people. That's the thing about the Christian religion is that you are, I guess it's like a brainwashing to think that you're very good people or that you have a moral high ground. And we believed at the time that we had a different kind of a doctrine, a doctrine that 
uh, took away the laws of our creator and it allowed us to do things like worship on a Sunday when it's uh, that's the first day, it's not the seventh day. And so I would have to say that as a Christian, I, I had really no fear. It's, it's a, you, you could just raise your hand and be saved. You are, you, the, the, the thing they say is once saved, always saved. And when you read scriptures, it never says that. It never says anything. And in fact, salvation comes with fear and trembling. It comes with walking as children do and being humble and, and, and not being evil, being righteous. And, and those are the kind of things that we have to have. And when we revere our creator, we are following in line with them. And, you know, there's people that just think that these laws are so hard to do and it's just such bondage. You know, try to spend a, two or three weeks in the hospital because you got sick from eating pig. And then you can kind of see that everything in the Torah is good. It's right. It'll keep you alive. It'll keep you healthy. And it's, it's good. And so there's no reason not to revere our creator. Okay, let's continue on. Okay. Anyone else have anything? Get no. me off my soapbox if I go too much. Here we go. Look at the generations of old and see. Did any ever trust in Yahuwah and were put to shame? Okay. Questions. Did anybody else? Did, no, everybody that trusts in Yahuwah that's ever mentioned always gets saved. Yeah, I mean, they're not put to shame. They're tested, but they're not put to shame. Okay, let's continue on. Or did any remain in her reverence and were forsaken? Anyone? Has anyone been Kodesh with our Creator? And everyone who has feared and obeyed Yahuwah, if you follow his laws, he protects you. If you do what he tells you to do, he does protect you, and he never leaves you. Yeah. Job got tried. He got tried. He lost a lot of stuff, but in the end, he didn't die. He didn't lose his life. He was healed, and he got back more than what he had. All right. Mr. Cole, what do you got? We have somebody new, Annie Signs. Hi, Annie. Um, and she says he's trying to take care of us. His laws are to protect us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, they are to protect us. They are to enhance us. And, you know, it's it's not like it's a it's a one-way street. There, it's not like the some crazy deity that wants you to, to serve and just be a servitude. It comes with blessings, and it comes with curses, right? And we're, we're trying to achieve the blessings, and we're not going to achieve the blessings when we're living in sin. When, when we are going against the wishes of our Creator, and you're never going to be able to find a single commandment that is not meant for the land that does it that sounds weird everything has a great purpose and it is to protect us absolutely very good annie okay let's continue on um or whom did he ever despise that called upon him we've never heard of that right no, he never rejected the amber that calls upon yahuwah they are saved he, he, he's our friend right he's our he's our father okay for yahuwah is full of compassion and kindness patient and very tender-hearted and forgives sins and saves in time of affliction. Wow, those are huge things, right? You know, somebody who's tender-hearted is awesome, right? That just means when, when somebody says, wow, you're very tender-hearted, that means that person is extremely kind. If that person went out and did some evil and, and that person has been labeled tender-hearted, you would be like, wow, how could that be? So is our creator patient? Yes. Yeah, we're all still living. Yeah. We're, every one of us are walking at this moment which is proof that our creator, I should have had lightning bolts a kabillion times long ago, all the time, right? There's been many, many times I did not walk with our creator and, and it's, it's bad. Okay, so he's patient, he's tenderhearted and he forgives sins and he saves in times of affliction. And we know that because we have stories, you know, we have life proof. We have miracles and things that happen on this, this crazy farm down in South America all the time of things that just are supernatural that just could not happen or are just one of these weird coincidences that just keep happening. Okay, he saves, our creator saves, and he'll save you as well. We need to call unto him and get the, this two-way communication going. Okay, 12, woe unto fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goes two ways. Okay, what does your guys say? Goes two ways. Goes two ways. Goes two ways. Goes two ways. Uh, what, what could they mean? What is a sinner going two ways? I think it's uh, going off the straight and narrow. I think it's like you're you're in and out, right? It's like, like the Falling track, off it's the like path. trying to be lukewarm. Lukewarm, right? Okay. And, you know, lukewarm, there's so many, you know, there's so many ways. When I was in modern day Christianity, we were lukewarm about everything. For the, for the, it was the craziest thing. We would, at this point, we would have had a Christmas tree in our church and we would have all been at the altar, probably on our knees in front of this decorated Christmas church. We would have all been singing carols. We would have had, you know, instead of um, Halloween, we had Oktoberfest and things of this nature. 
we can't do things like that. We can't mix ourselves in with the world because then we start smelling like the world and tasting like the world and looking like the world. And if there's nothing that distinguishes us from what the world is, then by default, we must be the part of the world. And that is a, a very bad place to be. Okay, let's continue on. Um, Woe unto he who is faint hearted, for he is unbelieving. Therefore, he shall not be defended. You have no faith. Yahuwah is not You call upon Yahuwah and you're without faith and he's not. You have to believe that he will save you and he will save you. Yeah, and you know, there's no better time than right now to get into a communication and a talk with our creator. Let's get into a time of prayer. Let's, let's start working on prayer time that we're not just calling upon our creator when we're faint-hearted, right? This should be something that this isn't a, hey, hey, I just... Good to hear from you. How you doing? It's been a while. You know, this is something that it's like, hey, how, how are you doing? I just, I barely talked to you. What stress are you having is, is what our creator should say, right? And so if you're going into prayer and you don't believe what you, that our creator lives and that his son lives and that he has created a Torah for us, then you're going to be faint hearted and, you know, you may not get your prayers answered. So this is about committing to the unknown and to what you cannot see so that we are able to get to the place where we will be able to see. Okay, anything going on in the chat room, Mystical? Um, Stupid says, I believe in a creator, but I'm so confused with all these religions. But I could listen to Jason talk. He's a good speaker. So I just responded with, we have no religion. We're yeah. just full well, scripture believers. Well, that's the thing, is there's 65,000 different documented religions that are out there. Every single one of these 65,000 different religions they all have what they call their, their, their code or their doctrine. It, they all believe something different. The Catholics will believe things like sprinkling water on the kids for baptism. They believe it, that a little man in a box is able to absolve you from your sins. And they have just a, a huge plethora of things. As a Baptist, which is yet another religion, I worshiped on the wrong day. I ate pork. For the, you know the craziest things, we had potlucks at church with bacon, bacon and beans. The craziest thing, an abomination to our Creator. So, what we don't want to get involved in is religion. We want to get involved in the Scriptures, right? We don't need religion. Religion is man-made. The entire, even the word religion is man-made. There's no such word in the Bible. So when you Start reading Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy very slowly and read it as a love letter to yourself, then you will start understanding how powerful our Creator is and the kind of walk He wants us to walk. Every single religion fails the test of Deuteronomy 4 2, which says to not add to or take away to the Torah. If there's anything that that takes anything away from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, it's wrong. So when you have an entire page of your church doctrines or your church manuals or what they believe, and they all have one, that's the problem because they don't believe what scriptures are. The, the people you want to hang with are the people that, that live scriptures, all of it, from the front of the book to the end of the book and everything in between. We're here to study to show ourselves approved unto our creator People who are not ashamed because we rightly divide the word of truth. And the word of truth starts in Genesis 1-1 and ends at the back end of Revelation. And I'll even take Jasher and Enoch. But religion will hurt you. Religion will have you doing things that are not in the scriptures. And the only way to find the truth is to read the scriptures yourself. You could listen to a, a people like myself. And that's what I found a problem. Even the Torah people that are trying to teach this stuff a lot of them have it wrong. There's a guy with like 200,000 subs and he sits there and he prays to the Holy Spirit. He prays to, to Messiah Yahushua. There is one creator and he has given us a son. The Trinity is yet more man-made doctrines that were invented by the Catholic Church and everybody suckered in to, to thinking that our creator and his son and the Holy Spirit are all one and then they end up praying to Messiah Yahushua and where do their prayers go? Right, Our creator has sent his son. His son said, this is how you pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right, Thy will be done. That is the Torah. That is what we are at. All right, I'm off my soapbox guys, before I get too far on. Let's roll. Okay, where are we at? 14. 
<laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what shall you do when Yahuwah shall punish you? So you lose your patience. You're like, okay, Yahuwah's not going to help me. Who's going to save me? Then all of a sudden, Yahuwah shall be like, hey, I'm here to help you. You're like, oh, I didn't believe in you. Like, oh, well, I'm going to help you then. Yeah, and, you know, that is one of these virtuous things, right? Patience, right? Something that most of us have a problem with. Me, for sure. I will totally say I have zero patience. Jade across the table from me raises his hand. Yeah, we have some problems here. Patience, right? And so this isn't the kind of patience it's talking about, but patience is one of these virtues that we all probably should be working on. And so it, what this one is talking about is what Jade said, is, is if you are praying and you're seeking our creator, and sometimes you will pray, right? Sometimes you guys will pray, and you will pray, and you will pray. You could pray for years, and nothing happens, and people will lose faith. And you have to understand that sometimes your prayers are not the will of our creator. When we pray, we always have to say in the will of our creator, Father, if this is your will, please answer what I'm, I'm seeking. You know, it has to be in the will. And if we go against the will of our creator, then things are going to go funky and we shouldn't have that. So let's continue on. 15. 15. To those who revere Yahuwah shall not disobey his word. And those who love him guard his ways. Okay, I got to stop right there and, and talk about this, right? Those who revere, so if you, those who respect, those who fear, those who love our creator shall not disobey his word. What is his word, Eli? The Torah. Where? What is the Torah again, Eli? The first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Yes, and so those are his word. Any kind of man-made doctrines, any kind of philosophy outside of it, anything that the Romans wrote to salvation, that the Christians say where you raise your hand and there's six verses out of Romans that get you saved and you're always saved, that's not real. And so this is real. Those, that, those who revere Yahuwah shall not disobey his word. And those who love him guard his ways. Eli, what are his ways? The Torah. The Torah. It's all about the Torah. It's about a motto. Yeah. Shout out the back of a shirt. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, 16. Those who revere Yahuwah seek that which is well-pleasing to him. All right, boys. What is well-pleasing to our creator? Us obeying him. Us obeying him. Let, what are some things that are displeasing to our creator? Disobeying. Drinking um, blood. Eating pork. Worshiping idols. Looking at your children naked. Disobeying the Torah. Disobeying the Torah. Not keeping Shabbat. Eating pork. You already said that a couple times. I never said that. I said that. Oh, okay. Well, you can't say the same one. What else? What else? What are some, some Stealing, things? Stealing, lying, hurting the poor, hurting yeah, the blind. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Beating Stealing up. from your neighbors. Be, there's a, there's a Torah. Putting your neighbors in danger. Right. There's a Torah command that says um, we're not supposed to hurt the disabled, right? So those are the things that are pleasing to him. The disabled, those people are very important to our creator. Those who are afflicted, those people are very important to our creator. So if we're breaking the Torah at all, that's not well pleasing to him. Okay, and those who love him shall be filled with the Torah. Those who revere Yahuwah prepare their hearts and humble their beings in his sight, saying, we shall fall into the hands of Yahuwah and not into the hands of men. For as his excellent is, excellence is, so is his kindness. All right, wow, this, this, is, a, this is a very good book, right? I mean, this, is, this book could get you all fired up. What is this book about? What is the bottom line? Keeping the Torah. Keep, following Yahuwah, I would say. Following Yahuwah, like, the, the way to the Creator. I said this like, chapter is waiting on Yahuwah, putting all your problems on Him and having patience that He will save you and having belief that He will save you in your times of need. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I think that's it. I don't have anything else. Um, if the chat room is quiet, I guess we will say goodbye to everybody out there. Thank you to anybody who's here now. Anybody that comes in the future. We do need to say hi to Lisa because she popped in here. Hi, Lisa. Do we, which Lisa? Lisa Ramlow. You, hi. You've talked to her oh, a few times. Oh, hi, Lisa. Yeah. And so everybody who's in this group, everybody who's in this little tiny ecclesia, this is exactly how we like it. We like these little tiny groups. We love our little people. We love you guys as a family. Thank you guys so much. Um, I say let's end this right here. Um, may Yahuwah bless you guys. May he keep you. May he forever shine his light upon you. May you forever be blessed. May you forever walk in his Torah. And may you forever fall in love with Messiah Yahushua. And may we forever be in the kingdom to come together. We thank you for all. And much love to everybody out there. All right. All right shalom. Shalom. All right.